So welcome back. I have a hard job to do. I have to keep you from taking a nap after the break, so I'll try to do my best. I'm here to talk about the Fire Protection Association Europe. This, you can see what, what we do here. It was founded uh, mainly because of fire prevention and protection. We have widened our scope now. We deal with safety and security. We also deal with cyber security, right, uh, uh, fresh. Um, we deal with other associated risks. In 1974, it was founded as a, uh, an association of exchanging information. And then we started work in so-called commissions. Um, we started with training, uh, building up and, and harmonizing uh, training uh, templates and training contents uh, throughout Europe. All members are what we call not-for-profit organizations, so not even the big shareholder company. Normally, it's a not-for-profit company. We link the national uh, recognized fire protection uh, organizations in 19 uh, European countries. You will see the member countries uh, right after. Um, we work only for the benefit of our members. CFPA Europe does not do any business. We, we don't sell anything. We don't produce anything. We just work for the benefit of our members. Training is only provided by the members. And the work is based on the workers of the members. The objectives, the objectives, you can read them yourself. Exchange of information, this is a very important thing, that's why we're also here. We want to make collaboration with, between the members easier. That's why we all speak English. <laughs> Some, not, in all people, uh, not in all countries, English language is the, uh, the official language. We carry out uh, research and studies, we don't carry out, but we try to, to, to build up a database of research projects that everybody could be interested in. We have tried to establish a research commission, but that didn't work because some of the results are secret and nobody can tell what we do. So I think the most important thing is to foster development of fire protection organization in new countries. I'm speaking here for CFPA Europe. There are also, there's also an international organization. So these are our members. We have different colors. We have the, the dark ones. These are what we call regular members. We have the green ones. One is in Estonia. Uh, th these are personal members. And then we hope to get two new members next year. One is Poland and one is Hungary. So we're working on it, and you can see the logos. I was, I've been working for the, for the Swiss member for 14 years. Our structure, the highest organ, the highest uh, uh, meeting is the General Assembly. We have a management committee. This is my position. We have a director since a little more than one year. We have a director, and we have the four commissions, training commission, Guidelines Commission, Security Commission, and Marketing Information. I will tell you more about that. We have a management committee. Here you see the members of the management committee. The chairman is from Denmark. The vice chairman is from Sweden. The director and one of the members is in the UK. You can see the other members. CFPA doesn't have employees except the director. So we have to rely on the, the resources of uh, the member organizations. And they all work in, in, in many fields. Not all members work in all the fields, but uh, the, regarding the whole thing, we have um, uh, competencies in many fields. Some of them have already been, been mentioned. Arson, for example, was a, a very big topic in the beginning. I heard that you had floods in, in Latvia this summer, spring, so this is also in natural hazards and environmental problems, things like that. 
We also do a lot of uh, inspection and audit services. The, the guy from the fire brigade uh, explained that they do inspection as well. We also do that, but it's not done, normally it's not done by the state, it's done by our member companies. In 2001, CFPA decided to cooperate and produce guidelines. Guidelines is just a, a list of best practice, practices. Normally one member comes up with an idea, it gives it into the guidelines commission, they discuss it, and if three members vote yes to produce a guideline, then it's produced. And then it has to, it, it, it's given out for comments, and then comments are worked in, and the final version uh, will, be, will be accepted only if the majority of the members accept the guideline. So we started with fire guidelines. We have started work with security in 2005. Natural hazards guidelines have started in 2011. Right now we have more than 50 different guidelines. Guidelines can be ratified by other organizations at the moment, there are two. One is Insurance Europe, and the other one will be CTIF. They, all, they both uh, ratify our guidelines. All the guidelines are free to download on the website of CAPA Europe. You will see the address in the end. So 36 are for fire safety, 10 uh, security guidelines, 6 natural hazard. That's just one example how they look. Uh, someone mentioned that, that you will uh, concentrate next year on, on uh, working museums. This is the guideline corresponding to that. Here you can see some examples of guidelines that have been ratified, that have been, been finished, accepted by the members. Uh, construction site could be something, yes. All different, uh, different topics. For security, we have 10, protection of business intelligence, and we realize that from the discussions with uh, insurance companies that uh, cybersecurity is becoming more and more important. So uh, we have started working on that. Some of the members have uh, do more already and others are a little behind, but we decided to do guidelines in that. One thing that I also heard this morning is uh, security in schools. This is an important thing, uh, also obviously here. The museum has already been mentioned. Arson document, that was the first guideline I ever heard about, was arson document. So natural hazards, protection against flood <laughs> would be one. And uh, we got a new member two years ago from Austria, and they concentrate on, uh, on uh, thunderstorms and hails. And now we are try starting, we have started to produce a guideline about hail. Uh, this is a very interesting topic. He has what they call a hail gun. He can shoot defined ice uh, uh, balls with a defined speed from a defined distance and the soldier can check if the tiles on the roofs also uh, uh, withstand hail. I've never seen or heard of that before, but it's, what, it's very interesting, and they are producing a guideline now. So, the second thing we started was training and education. First of all, we want to, uh, we want to, to, to raise the public awareness uh, for the risk of fire and, and uh, security. And so the, the national organizations came together and exchanged their content and the templates of the courses. And um, we started to, to make harmonized courses. And in the end, you can get a, a diploma, a certificate, or an attest. If you do that in Portugal, it is accepted in Finland. If you do it in Iceland, no, Iceland doesn't do training. If you do it in, in Norway, it will be accepted in Italy as well. Because the, 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 the content, the template of the course is harmonized throughout Europe. The diploma, is, uh, as we said, we have, we have in 2006 and we had uh, 1, 000, little more than 1,300 new diploma holders. 
and a little more than 1,000 persons got certificates. You see the uh, numbers are raising. 2015 was not so many. We have courses in three different, in two different uh, uh, topics, fire safety and security. At the moment, there are 41 approved courses. There is a list of the approved courses. You can get that on the website as well. These are some examples. This is uh, for, uh, courses in fire safety. Here you can see the, the, the topic and this is what you get in the end. So I think the most important ones are the, the ones with the diploma in the end. But there are also sh uh, short ones, evacuation. We heard about that this morning as well. So if, if you can get an attest as an evacuation steward uh, in a, a course of uh, CFPA. We have fire engineering courses. This is a topic that gets more and more important. Uh, we are also working at the moment to, to fit our courses in the EQF uh, classes, levels. So, so we also know what, what level EQF level our courses will have. And some of them, one, so it, one, of, one of these, this one I think, is a, a level eight in France, which means master level. Okay, fire protection, systems equipment. We also have some security uh, courses. Okay. And we pack them together in courses. So we say, if you want to, to be a specialist in security, these are courses that, that could help you to do your job. Information, uh, CFPA was started to, to exchange information. Uh, we still do that. We have a new website since a little more than a year. There you can find information from the members. You can find best practices. We have a newsletter since a little more than one year. If you want to, you can subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. You will get three or four times a year a newsletter with uh, actual topics regarding fire prevention and security. This is the website. There you have three, three, the three most, most uh, urgent or current um, topics. There. there you can find the guidelines, for example. This is the information about the training courses. Okay the structure of CFPA. We network to help, and here we are in, international, in the international uh, connection. You see we have uh, above CFPA Europe, we have uh, international, except uh, Europe, they have uh, Asia, an Asia, an Asian chapter, an African chapter, an American chapter, and CFPA international is also linked to, to the United Nations. Uh, yes, uh, there's a list, a rooster of consultative status, and we are listed in that book. We try to establish connection to the EU. These are organizations like we are, EFSG, CTIF, they are endorsing our guidelines, FEU. We um, try to, to, to get more closer connection to these information. These are other organizations. Insurance Europe uh, will also um, ratify our guidelines. CFPA, Europe has close connection to all 19 members and also close connection to the other members of CFPA International, not only in Europe, worldwide. We support the work of different commissions, Eurolam, Eurofeu, Insurance Europe, as mentioned before, and some of the members of CFPA Europe are also a member of CFP International. It's not mandatory, most of them are, but it's not mandatory. So I was asked to speed up. I try to do my best. Thank you for your information, uh, for your attention. <laughs> <laughs>